All right, Coach, uh, the Lady Rail Splitters are into the midst of what is a very difficult South Atlantic Conference schedule over the past couple of weeks and what's been a very busy week again for the team. We'll start with last Saturday uh, where the team went to Catawba over the weekend to wrap up what was a very tough three-game road stretch and the Indians who were playing just as good a basketball as anybody right now in the conference come away with a 65-47 to win after the loss to Carson Newman. So overall, in Salisbury, what were your thoughts on that loss to Catawba? Well, uh... Honestly, I was hoping to forget about that game uh, altogether. Uh, but since you brought it up, uh, uh, I just felt like it was one of those games that, I mean, we just mentally were not there. Uh, you know, and I know we've got such a young team, and and, uh, and I just I just felt like we just didn't come out ready to play. And and uh, Catawba, you know, I mean, they, they're obviously trying to scrape out for one of those top four positions in our conference. And... And I just thought that they had a great game plan. They executed, and and I just felt like from from the jump we were we were, our team wasn't in sync in so many different ways. Uh, so you know, I just it's one of those situations that you can get extremely frustrated. And I was. Uh, you know, I'm not gonna lie and say that I wasn't. But we had two of the best practices um, coming back Thursday, or no, I'm sorry, uh, Monday and Tuesday from Catawba and that was really encouraging because you know I, I, I almost was kind of like man did, did this team just I mean are, are we ready for the season to be over with like we're starting the conference play totally over with Catawba that was the first game in the second part of the conference and you know I, with our performance that night I was just so discouraged um, on the bus ride home and you know and and I was really reassured on Monday with our uh, team's energy and uh, how they came out and practiced that, no, we're not ready for it to be over and we've got a lot more basketball to play. And as long as we're coming out and being that competitive like we were uh, on Monday and Tuesday, it obviously carried over to Wednesday night's game. And those practices on Monday and Tuesday, like you just said, certainly carried over to Wednesday night's game. Uh, finally returning home to Tex Turner Arena where the team's only had one loss this season, which was a buzzer being lost at that. So, And taking on a Tusculum team, again, it hasn't gotten any easier for you guys in conference play because Tusculum was playing very well inside of the conference and uh, the Lady Rail Splitters, what was a game of runs between both of those teams, pulls out the win by nine points. So overall, what were your thoughts on that victory? Well, I just, I think it showed a lot of maturity uh, for our team. Uh, it showed a lot of heart because, again, you're coming off, I mean, I thought Catawba's loss was just devastating just because we were doing so much wrong uh, that it was hard to figure out where where to start to correct it. Uh, and so we just kind of went back um, to the basics on, on Monday and Tuesday and just really focused on, okay, you know, who stops the ball in transition? Who gets back? Like, let's go back to things that we've never once adjusted. That is it like a, a, I mean, a guaranteed every single game. Why are we not doing those things? And we just, you know, went back and reviewed, uh, really reviewed on our defense. What are we trying to get out of this? When we're running this defense, what is the purpose? And, you know, when we're in this defense, what are we trying to get? And so I, I think we just had to really break it down again and, and bring those thoughts to the forefront of our girls' minds because we've lost them. We've lost them somewhere. Um, and, and, again, I just felt like they were really focused on Wednesday night going against Tusculum. Tusculum's a great team. Uh, we knew that they were going to get out and, and pressure us. And, and, uh, and the only thing, we watched the, the film of the, of the game at third place, and I just felt like we did a great job uh, breaking their press, but we would break it to not score. We, we broke it to slow up, and I didn't understand that. I was like, you know, we already have the momentum. Why are we not breaking this press to score? You know, let's be aggressive. And every time that our team is aggressive, we're, we're successful. Every time that we're timid, we're not. And, you know, and it's, it, you know, I tell the girls all the time, and there's a formula here. Let's stick with the formula, and, and we get the results that we want. Mm. And we talked about it after the Carson Newman loss last Wednesday, that the mistakes that the team made on the road were fixable. They yes. were mistakes that could be fixed in practice. And it certainly, it certainly showed uh, on Wednesday that it seemed like, just like you said, the energy and the maturity level was there. The body language from the girls was very, very good. And it really translated to their performance as there were so many players that stepped up, whether it be on the, in the starting lineup or on the bench, that contributed to the victory because you look at kind of the swing of the game, 
in the first quarter, all of a sudden we hold Tusculum to less than 20% shooting in that period yeah. to gain a 10-point lead. Second quarter is a different story. Tusculum brings it back to a one-point game at, at halftime, eventually takes the lead in the third quarter, but it was a 12 to nothing run in that period for the team, and you held on with strong defense to close out the victory. So overall, just a very nice team win on Wednesday. Well, I think, too, like, okay, so I, I like us being aggressive, okay, but now we have to do it uh, in a smart, <laughs> um, be aggressive uh, while also thinking the game. We just got in foul trouble, um, and again, you know, I was, I was telling our players, you know, and they, they, they weren't smart fouls. Uh, you know, you're, you're fouling 90 feet away from the basket, so now they're in the bonus, so they get to walk 90 feet to shoot free throws. We don't want to do that. And it was things, you know, uh, we're being aggressive, we're slowing them down, we're making them run our tempo, and that's great. But when you're slowing them down, move your feet. Don't put your hands. I mean, there's just so many different fouls that I felt like, you know, okay, yes, I appreciate that you're being aggressive, okay, but now let's be smart. Um, and, and it's just an adjustment that we had to make. And I felt like, you know, I mean, M got two fouls quick. You, Deja got two fouls. Ross had two fouls. Shay had two fouls. I mean, we were, you know, and most of the time in the first half, if you have two fouls, I'm sitting you, you know, to, to save you for the second half. And, and uh, we, <laughs> there was a lot that I was looking at in the bench, like who does not have two fouls so that I can figure out who to put in and, and uh, you know, not really skip a beat. And, you know, so I just, uh, I feel like that's a learning process too. And, um, you know, I feel like, you know, we're going to keep on getting better and better. And then once we play LR on Saturday, I think that'll take effect. Yes, you want to be aggressive, okay? So now we're, the level of aggressiveness that, that we're wanting is there. But now let's be smart. And I feel like we're going to make that transition and, and we're going to keep getting better and you're going to see a better team on Saturday. Mm. And I think one of the biggest things to take away from the team's previous two losses to Carson Newman and Catawba on the road, the team was out-rebounded in what was a rare occurrence on the season. It wasn't by much, but the team was able to get an edge on the glass and that contributed to the win on Wednesday. Tusculum didn't have a chance against LMU on the glass. And it really, I, th I think that when Lincoln Memorial has a big advantage like that on the rebounding department, they're very difficult to stop. Well, Brandon, you know that that's my, that's my stat right there is rebounding. And I just feel like rebounding tells you so much about a team because rebounding is it's an effort stat. And it's, it's just you determining that you are going to outwork your opponent. Yes, there's, there's t technique involved. Yes, I'm not saying that there, there isn't. But for the most part, it's just you just, you know, no, I'm going to outwork you. And I just felt like our players were determined to do that um, on, on Wednesday. And it, it obviously works for us every time that we've done that, just like you said. So if you could come and talk to our players, that might be the key, Brandon, because you are getting it. And, and you know, hopefully we'll continue. Because every game that we've out-rebounded uh, opponents, we've been in that game or won it. You know, so it's, it definitely puts us in a position to win the game and be, and be victorious. So, uh, you know, I just believe that that light bulb's clicking. Um, and, I, and, you know, Brandon, I, I believe in our team. I mean, yes, I'm not going to lie to you. I was discouraged after the Catawba loss. Uh, but just the fact that they regrouped and we, you know, refocused and were able to execute Wednesday night, I just believe we're going to get hot right when we need to, and we're going to be scary there mm -hmm. at the end. Mm -hmm. And I think the players realized that, too, on Wednesday, that it was an important victory to have on the season. Not only, you know, falling to Tusculum earlier on in the season in late November in the first sack game of the season by four points to get revenge on them, but also to bounce back from that two-game losing slide after winning five in a row previously to get back on the winning track, as you said, now here in the second part of conference play, because it really showed from the mentality of all the girls out there, whether it was the Griffith, uh, the Griffith sisters or Maggie Jackamzook or Elizabeth Jones or whoever it was that contributed valuable minutes to the team, that they realized that it was an important win that needed to be completed. Well, I think, too, you know, just uh, the fans and, and uh, just people that aren't in our practice every day, you know, please remember, I mean, these are freshmen. And so, you know, it, it's – I mean, yes, we, we, it's like a roller coaster ride. I mean, you know, obviously we were down at Catawba and then we come back and, you know, and, and these are great teams. I mean, these are teams that are above us that we're still trying to catch up with and, and grab a victory so that we can move uh, up, up the standings. But, you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that I'm trying to be patient. And I had a conversation with the girls uh, on Monday uh, during film session and I said, you know, 
you're, you're not freshmen because you're not playing freshman minutes. You know, you're like, we're 17 games in the season. You're not a freshman anymore. And, you know, it, yes, is there a lot of pressure on you? Yes, I get it. And, I, and I'm, trying to, I'm trying to be patient. But at the same time, it's one of those situations, would you rather be on a team where you are that true freshman and you're sitting on the bench and you don't have a chance, no matter how hard you practice, no matter how hard you uh, – or, or how productive you are, that those you know, upperclassmen are going to play and they're going to play every minute. Or would you rather be on this situation where you have a chance, an opportunity to, to produce and go out there and do the best you can? And I feel like, you know, our players have done that. I felt like Jordan Jordan gave good uh, minutes uh, last night in the victory. And, and every time she's aggressive, every time she's going towards the basket, something good happens for us. Um, and I felt like Maggie gave us great minutes. I felt Elizabeth gave us great minutes. Uh, you know, so, I mean, we've gotten there, you know, again, Jordan – She's not a freshman, but she is. She's new to our team, you know. And then uh, you've got Elizabeth and Maggie, who are true freshmen. And, you know, so I just – I think they're still trying to figure it out. Uh, but, you know, I mean, it, it's it, – each and every game, it's, it's, it's getting closer and closer, and we're getting better and better. And, you know, uh, like I said, I'm telling them, you know, February, I just really feel like that's going to be our month, and I really feel like – we're going to be right where we need to be right before conference tournament. Mm -hmm. And right before February can get going, uh, Lenore Ryan will come into Tex Turner Arena this coming Saturday. Again, uh, another, like you said, it's the second part of South Atlantic Conference play. Everybody's facing off in conference play for the second time now for the rest of the season. LMU got the win down in Hickory in late December, and now we'll try and do the same again. So what can we expect in the second straight home matchup for the Lady Rails Putters this well, weekend? Well, I think LR is playing some of their uh, best basketball thus far. Uh, I mean, they, they've really continually gotten better and better every game. I believe they're on a three-game winning streak right now. Uh, so, you know, I, I think it's one of those situations that you can't hold on to the fact that we won before. Um, I think that was another problem that we did against Catawba. Like, oh, we won. We don't have anything to focus on. No, we do. Because you're not the same team. We're not the same team that we were uh, December 30th, and they're not the same team that they were December 30th. You know, both teams have improved and, and are mo making strides moving forward. So, you know, we really got to take care of business. We got to execute. Um, and I just feel like with, with LR, that first half, we were so timid. And it was extremely frustrating. And, and it showed. I mean, I believe we went into the uh, halftime trailing by four. And then it was just like a totally like a, a flip of the switch uh, at, at halftime. We came out in that, that second half, and we were aggressive, and we were playing the way that we know we can play. And it obviously it worked for us, and, and it, we took the lead and never looked back. And, you know, I'm just hoping that right now what I'm going to be telling the girls, uh, you know, the next two days in preparation is just, you know, why, why, do, we, why do we have to, you know, take a um, – get down or why don't we have to give them the lead or or basically you know why do we got to get a black eye before we come out swinging you know let's let's come out from the start the game playing our tempo being aggressive and you know the results will be what we want